Hello, dear leaders. I'm immensely pleased to present the seventh episode on our channel, Biblical Leadership Institute. I'm excited uh, because this is one of my favorite topics since it literally challenges our understanding of leadership and religion at the core. The title is called Be Great. Isn't it our inherent nature to strive for greatness? I would uh, like to study a probably underrated biblical character from the New Testament to drive home invaluable lessons on leadership greatness. Catch you on the other side. We live in an era where the word marketing garners a lot of interest and investment. It is a well-known understanding that one can sell anything, however shoddy it may be, if it is marketed the right way. The notion of ethical marketing is long gone and uh, money-hungry people know how to grab our attention to sell almost anything. Take for instance the ads for cars these days you will be presented with a sophisticated, grand-looking car fitted with every known accessory, advertised in big, bold letters stating, make it yours for $19,999. It would uh, seem too alluring for the price, uh, but what we fail to notice is the word onwards written in tiny, illegible text next to the dollar amount. What they imply is the car's price starts from $19,999 onwards, uh, which is 20 k by the way. In other words, even if you have that money, you may still not be able to own it. You would have to shell out an additional three to five grand to pay taxes, showroom prices, mandatory accessories, etc. Do you know that the $19,999 basic variant does not even look close to the one ad advertised on the billboard. It would easily cost another 50% more to own the one that is displayed in the ad. Uh, have we ever sat to ponder if uh, these ads are ethical uh, to show you something else, uh, deceive you with uh, glamorous prices, and then bombard with you with uh, additional charges? Uh, we are now so accustomed to unethical marketing that we do not bother about it at all. Uh, it has instead become the norm. Another great marketing strategy is to get celebrities to endorse a product by paying them ludicrous amounts of money. Uh, we are thrilled to see our favorite actor or sports personality on TV talking about a product. Uh, we never truly get into the nitty gritty of uh, how the company can afford such colossal amounts for a celebrity to be their brand ambassador. The ugly truth is that uh, the money paid to the celebrities is conveniently added to the retail price of the product you and I pay. Uh, in short, we spend our money to pay a celebrity to persuade us to purchase a product that is most often unnecessary for us. Sounds strange, but that's the world we live in. Well, all of this proves that we live in a time where we are repeatedly bombarded with advertisements and uh, promotional content to polarize and uh, distract us. It has inevitably become that a product no longer requires quality rather great marketing strategies for it to be successful. This has given birth to the so-called marketing agencies uh, who are in constant battle about who can entice and lure people the most. I'm telling you, it's a hideous world out there. As a leader of worth, one's greatness should speak for itself as opposed to be touted and marketed. It is very easy to capture people's attention by enticing them as the marketing folks do. And that's why fame today can be acquired 
or earned if you find the right promotional medium. Yet, among these amoral hordes, uh, there still exist many that are far more worthwhile than the ones the world celebrates. As you know, I'm reading this from my book, 10 Pragmatic Leadership Principles from the Bible. And the leadership quote I have written here is, as leaders, we should strive hard to radiate greatness naturally. In Acts 10, there is a mention of a person from Caesarea named uh, Cornelius. He was a centurion in the Italian regiment who believed in God together with his family and uh, most importantly, someone who readily gave to those in need. Please note, this was during the time the Church of God was not established as it is today. And um, there was a prevalent perception that only Jews could be followers of Jesus. But it certainly did not seem to matter to Cornelius as he continued to be a devout man, uh, excelling in his giving to others and in prayer. Acts 10, 1 and 2 says, at Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion in what was known as the Italian regiment. He and his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. Though Cornelius was a devout man, uh, he did not have the customary traits of a pious person belonging to a specific religion. Uh, for instance, uh, we Christians are part of a church. We read the Bible, pray daily. Uh, and so uh, in Cornelius's case, uh, he was not part of a church congregation since he was a Gentile. He did not have the book of law uh, and was not well versed with the Christian customs. All he knew was that God exists. He hears prayers and the most pleasing gesture according to God is to lend a helping hand to the needy. He simply went on to practice this form of religion quite religiously. A leadership quote, the impeccable characteristic of greatness is that it spreads. There is no way greatness can be contained. It shines even if you try to conceal it and glows even brighter if you attempt to quell it. Cornelius did not go about marketing his greatness. Uh, instead, he simply radiated it naturally. And guess what? It attracted God's attention. Among the millions who incessantly cried to God to listen to them, God's attention was driven to an unconventional person like Cornelius. This is what greatness can accomplish. I'm reminded of the value of pearls. Now, pearls are hidden within shells that are buried under the ocean floor. Pearls have so much worth that even if they conceal themselves in unreachable places, people still search and find them. The pearls do not market themselves, or while in fact they uh, do quite the opposite. Yet, their greatness cannot be contained even when hidden within a shell beneath the ocean floor. Divers risk their life to go in, find, and treasure them. Cornelius continued to radiate his greatness and the unimaginable happened. God dispatched his angels to minister to him. Uh, I admire the way they acknowledge his excellence. In Acts 10, 3 to 4, one afternoon, about three o'clock, Cornelius had a vision in which he saw an angel of God coming toward him. Cornelius, the angel said, your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. Please note, not his religion, not his status, not his knowledge, but his prayers and gifts to the poor drew God's attention. I repeat, greatness attracts. As leaders, uh, there are two vital lessons to learn from Cornelius's life. Number one is emanate greatness. 
in a world of unethical marketing and dubious practices to capture fame, it is imperative to adopt Cornelius's model of greatness. We should continue being the great we are, abounding in every good work, as Paul mentions in his letter to Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 1, 5, it says, For in him you have been enriched in every way, in all speech and all knowledge. Beware not to fall into the pit of acquiring fame or attention by unethical means. They sure work, but uh, we may not want to enjoy that ill-gotten glory. And the second lesson is, as leaders, discover and honor greatness. Another key attribute of a great leader is to identify and honor greatness, especially in today's world where our attention primarily gets driven towards well-marketed, fabricated greatness. Uh, a leader should be able to identify those pearls concealed beneath the ocean floor. A leader should be capable of distinguishing real excellence from the forged ones. I have covered this topic extensively in part four, uh, titled Honor Quality versus Quantity. The link would appear somewhere here. Uh, please do watch it. When I counsel young people specifically about choosing a spouse, uh, this is one of the important pieces of advice I urge them to chase after. That is to seek genuine greatness. I have sat across young people regretting their life choices and almost all of them fell for what appeared superficially appealing, but in the end only to realize it wasn't the true beauty. There are so many other examples in the Bible that talk about greatness that grabbed God's attention. Mary, the mother of Jesus, is another significant character. Mary never asked God to be the mother of the most precious baby on earth, but she simply continued to be the great woman she was. Would you like to know one of the best perks of uh, being like this? There is a sure visitation from God. It is almost like God cannot contain himself when he stumbles upon greatness. Uh, he has to honor them that exercise greatness. So leaders, the choice is ours today. Are we going to seek fame and glory by falsely exemplifying ourselves through shady means? Remember, there is a simple, straightforward, and more graceful way to attain greatness. Just be great. Thank you and God bless you. Biblical Leadership Institute is an initiative to unearth and explore the leadership tenets from the Bible. I'm John, author of the book 10 Pragmatic Leadership Principles from the Bible and also hold various leadership positions both in churches and corporates with a career spanning around 18 years. If you're someone who wants to learn leadership principles from the foundations of the scripture, I urge you to come along subscribe to our channel, share with your friends, and also actively contribute to our BLI for forums in www.biblicalleadershipinstitute.org. Please join me in this great revolution and together let's follow Christ's model of leadership to lead the world with courage, humility, and love. God bless you.